work in your life, Lord, and that we're going to leave here changed. Lord, we thank you for this night. We love you, Lord, and we just give you all of our worries, all of our cares of today, of the week, Lord, and we just give it to you. We lay it at your feet, God, and we ask your Holy Spirit to just have your way in this place, Lord. We love you so much, and we expect from you tonight. We thank you for the word that's going to go forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you guys can stand up on your feet, and let's worship. We're going to make this our prayer tonight for the Lord to open the eyes of our heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high. To see you high and lifted up. Oh, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Come on, we're going to sing holy to the Lord. Oh, you are holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Let's sing that again. You are holy. You are holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you, to see you high, to see you high and lifted up. Yes, Lord, shining, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 to see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Let's sing holy. We sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. We sing holy, Lord. We sing holy, 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 I want to see you. Yes, Let's see this one more time. See you high. I see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory, yes, Lord, pour out, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Now just our voice is holy. We sing holy, 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 
Holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, holy, I want to see you. Yes, Lord, hallelujah, Lord. Let's just lift up our voices tonight. We worship you, Jesus. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, God. We love you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. You never stop working. 
you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Get somebody close to you. Tell them hi. Tell them you're glad you're here today. Wow, we're having Wednesday service. Is that cool or what? So, um, just nice to be here. And uh, I was like, oh, I hope it's not too hot. But uh, you know what? It's just it's just right. But let me just teach you. Even if it's hot, show up. Amen. Praise God. How many know there's some place hotter than this, right? I, I didn't say where. I just said someplace. Yeah. Praise God. Well, it's so good to see you here today, and we thank God for, for what he's doing in our hearts and in our lives. Um, there are so much um, cool things that are happening in in the lives, you know, one of the one of the things that we do is we just do a a testimony uh, Wednesday sometimes, and it's just amazing. Or even Sunday, sometimes we'll do testimony Sundays, and it's a uh, you know God is moving in people's hearts, and 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 the reason why that is is because the word is being preached. See, the word will will affect your life, and uh, the word will change your life from the inside out, and you start things that you used to do that would bother you or would not bother you and now they bother you why because you're you're seeing what god says in his word you're saying no 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 it's like jesus said not not my will but your will but here's the thing when you get on his page when you get on his his plan uh you know that is your life is going to get better i mean for sure it just will and so we thank god that you're here that's part of it showing up on when the word is preached and and we thank God for that. Amen. So, uh, and we thank God for your willingness. Oh, this is what I wanted to say. Can you turn me down just a little bit? Uh, this is what I wanted to say. Um, our, your commitment to uh, building the kingdom of God as you are faithful in bringing in tithes and offerings. Understand, we're going to be here next week. And we're going to be here the week after that. And we're going to be here the week after that. We're going to be here the week after that. And and we don't know when other people are going to come in. Like we didn't know when you were coming in. But here's the thing you got to understand. When you came in, we were here. 
That's deep, huh? But it's absolutely factual. When you came in, we were here. And we were here preaching the word of God. And we were here preaching the word of God because other people were here and they were faithfully bringing their tithes and offerings. So that's kind of how it works. Then you came and you thought, you know, maybe you weren't even, maybe you weren't even a Christian at that point in time. I don't know. Maybe you were. But uh, you know what? You maybe weren't part of a, a strong Bible-believing church. You know what? We have so many people who come from all kinds of different backgrounds. And, uh, or maybe you just moved here. You know what I mean? Or all kinds of reasons. But you came here. And when you came, there were people who had supported this church long enough that the word could, could continue to be preached. And so for that, we thank those people. And for that, we thank you because they're going to come. And here's the deal. As you support the work financially, um, you're getting blessed. So recognize it's not just about those who are in, in Try to live outside yourself that your life isn't just about you. If your life is about you, just you, you're going to be very limited. But if your life becomes be about others, then you start to live a fuller life. And so um, praise God. And, and think about this because this is the reality. Uh, you know, there's people, there's, there's little people right now who are learning the word of God. Hallelujah. Well, you know, they're, you know, 48 cents ain't going to, you know, Hey, listen, everything helps. But you know what I mean? How many know, you know, the preschoolers and the, the you know, the sixth graders, <laughs> you know, their, their tithe on their allowance isn't really, does that make sense? Shake your head like that, if that makes sense. Or even junior hires or even the high schoolers. And you know, because you've been here on Sunday, I tell people, hey, I don't care how old you are. I don't care what's going on. You know what? You need to be part of the solution. But what I'm saying is right now, your ability, your willingness to help is already helping all kinds of different people. And so that's why Tamara and I stand up here and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's why I'm saying it tonight. Thank you for your generosity and for your understanding how this thing works. Father, I just come in agreement with my wife. I thank you that we, we have a happy, hilarious heart as we give. We don't see it as a drudgery. Uh, we see it as, uh, it is a responsibility but we see it as an opportunity. So we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand back up on our feet. You know, and I grew up in a song where we say, There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free? Oh, would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil or victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. <laughs> Father, we just thank you. We raise up these tithes and offerings up to you. We thank you for the opportunity we have. Father, we thank you for just um, as we are faithful to you, you're so faithful to us. We love you with all our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Happy Wednesday, Hope Community Church. I'm blessed. Aren't you guys blessed? Too blessed to be stressed. Amen. I love it. I love it. I was, I was reading Psalms 23, and, you know, um, David's saying that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen? Because if we don't have a shepherd, man, you know, the sheep get in trouble. The sheep get in trouble. They're easy prey, too. You got lions, wolves, you know? 
And they need that shepherd. Just like God is our, my shepherd. He, he helps us. He, he, he's, got, he's got his, his sword and his, he's got his, his rod to, to, the rod is to move things and pull you back. And, and his sword is to kill the enemy. Amen. Amen. And I was thinking, wow. Because, you know, if, if I'm guided by my shepherd, then I'm good. Because, I mean, I, have you guys ever been tempted? No, seriously. No, I, and you're like, and then I remember when I was serving God and I was looking for that one thing and that never came around. Like, and all of a sudden, it's everywhere. And I'm, what the heck? That's the enemy, man, tempting me. Hey, woo, look at that. Look at, you want to try this? You wanna, you know? And that's, that's the way the enemy, that's why we have a shepherd. He pulls us and he watches us. He, 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 he makes us lay down in, in, in green pastures. And, and, and you know, because as sheep, we, we, we could blow it, man. We're easy prey. And I was thinking about that. Wow, Lord. That's why David says that, you know what I mean? My Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. That's awesome, man. Amen. Praise God, amen. Praise the Lord, okay. Okay, I got, I got a joke. It's a good one. Eh? What do you call a guy who loses his car? Carlos, yeah. Carlos. Amen. Carlos. Carlos. All right, if you have your Bible, put it over your head. Say, this is my Bible. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm ready to receive the infallible word of God. And having received the word of God, I will do the word of God. Amen. Carlos. I got, I, hey, I got a great Father's Day joke. Okay, you want to hear it? Okay, come Sunday and you'll hear it. When I was a children's pastor, uh, I had learned, uh, really, to be a good teacher, you need to be a good storyteller. And, uh, and I uh, started to develop my skills in, in telling stories. And, uh, and I would... I would make up these crazy stories and I'd have the I'd have the the boy out there on the limb of the tree and and the tree would start to break and there was a pond underneath him and somehow an alligator got in that pond and and I would have the limb just breaking And he started to run towards the inside of the trunk so it wouldn't, but he wasn't going to make it. He wasn't going to make it. You know what happened? You know what happened? Come back next week. I'll tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> now, now, I always had points coming up to that. They didn't just come for nothing, but... Uh, But we have some awesome stories in the book of John. Turn to John chapter 2. And as you're turning there, let me just remind you a couple of things. Let me remind you a couple of things. This isn't just a book. You know, how many know there's a lot of books? And uh, some good books that you can read. But this isn't just a book. This is a book that the Bible describes. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's, it's alive, the Bible says. God reveals. This, is, this book is alive. This, and, and we have a, you know, these, I mean, no, there are spiritual concepts that take really our faith to, comprehend it does that make sense hey can I can I have a coaching teaching training moment right now yes. does somebody want to be coached and trained yes. I remember this somebody taught me this when I was uh, um, 
just a young man, and it has helped me out so, so much. So when the word is taught, this is free. This isn't, this is just an extra bonus. When the word is taught, um, what Satan wants to do is he wants to steal that word that's sown. He would love, there are other things that he does if you will hear the word tonight. And he'll try to take it away other different ways. But what he loves to do is just blow it away that it never even goes in your heart. Shake your head like this if it makes sense. Because now that seed that is going to, if it gets in good ground, it's going to produce something in your life. Now, there's no even shot that it will have a, a, a chance because it doesn't even, it's just blown out of here. You say, well, well, Pastor, what are you talking about? Here's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this man taught me, and it has served me well for years and years and years. When Armstrong or, or, um, or Laura or uh, Pastor Paul, or Pastor Shayla, or Pastor Joel, or Pastor Isaac, or anyone comes to preach the word. Um, I tell you what, your getting up and going to the restroom is not going to take my attention off the word of God. No helicopter, no, no horn, nobody coming in, nobody, you know what? Well, you know what? what? You know, and, and I'm just teaching this because I see it all the time. Somebody comes up, you know what? And they stand up and they go back there. Oh, what are they doing? What are they doing? I, they're going to the bathroom. Probably, right? And how many know that's not going to rock your boat at all? Right. People do it every day not going to rock your boat. But when we live undisciplined lives, Satan is able to drag us here and drag us there and get us to be looking at things that we have no business looking at. He has us sometimes saying things we have no business saying. He can just drag us all over. And the main thing that is going to revolutionize your life, not only your life, but your kids' lives and your grandkids' lives. You know, you can, you can set the trajectory for your uh, family for generations to come, but you're not going to set it for generations to come without a seriousness of discipline to, to lock into the Word of God. Does that make sense? And something, and you're so, Pasha, you know what? You're, you're getting mad at us because we looked over there. No, no, no. I'm just having a coaching, teaching, training moment. Amen. How many like to be teach and co coached and helped out? Man, I don't want to miss out. I mean, if, 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 if somebody's speaking, I want to hear what God has to say. Because I'm believing that that they're not really speaking, that God is going to use them, happened on Sunday. How many were blessed Sunday? Man, I saw so many hands go up. Well, well you know what? And, and you can go up to Laura and, and thank her, but thank her for being a vessel of what the Holy Spirit is doing. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shake your head like this, if that makes sense. Okay. So I learned to be laser focused. Okay. Can I teach you something else? Can I go a little further? Okay. You, you won't get mad at me if you're sitting in the back, will you? You got to promise me. You got to promise me. If I was here, can I tell you where I'd be sitting? I would be sitting where Isabel's sitting or where Brian is sitting. Why would you do that? Here's why. Can I teach you? Okay. Here's why. Because if I'm sitting here, how many people are between me and the speaker? Nobody. See, somebody scratch your head, and I think, you know, and I'm tell you what, Satan does this all day long. Somebody scratch your head, you think, man. All of a sudden, you're thinking, man, I wonder if they use, you know, I wonder what shampoo they use. I want, you know, do they use 
do they use head and shoulders? You know what? That, that'll get. I'm just, t- t- tell me about I'm not telling the truth. And all of a sudden, you're, and you're thinking, man, I wonder, I wonder, I think, I think I'm out of shampoo. I remember, uh, uh, yeah, I'm out of shampoo. I got to go to Walmart. And then next thing you know, you're at Walmart. You're not at Walmart, but you're not here. Amen. And you're, and you're thinking, oh, and bananas. We're all out of bit. Well, I got bananas, but the bananas got that brown. And then I heard, you know what? You know, I heard if you eat bad, you know, bananas that aren't, you know, that are brown. I heard that's bad for you. You know what I mean? Oh, man, speaking of bad for you, you know what? I, I probably need to, you know what, get some of those, uh, um, those uh, what are those things you, you take for your stomach? Ah, Tom's, oh, my goodness. Alka Seltzer, you guys are in. <laughs> Antibiotics. Oh, I need Tom's. Alka Seltzer, you guys are funny. Okay. No. I, but I need to get better. I get some antibiotics. I heard those. And you go from that, you know what? You, do you understand? And you're all, and, and how much did you miss out? Okay. That, that's why that's where I'm going to sit. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's just where I'm going to sit. So it's all free. You know, take it for, for the value that it is. But I'm telling you what, that has served me well. I'm going to sit up front. Probiotics, that's what it is, probiotics. Okay. But it, it has served me well for a long time, and it will serve you well. Okay, and, I, and I'll give you one more. You know what, like Isabel has. You know what, she has her notepad and she has her pen. Why? Because you remember more of what you write down. I don't care what you write down. Well, I do care. You know, be nice to me. You know, but, you know, Pastor Hare looked funny today. No, not, don't write that. <laughs> but what I'm saying is anything that, um, if you can react as I'm speaking, even if you're writing stuff down, you will, you'll retain more of what you, you'll walk away with a higher retention. So I'm just teaching you. What are we doing? We're making disciples. This is part of making disciples. So sit up close, get a pad, get a, you know, a notepad. You know what I mean? And, and really, you just learn to be a student of the word. All right. John chapter 2. John chapter 2. We're going through John. We're, we're in John chapter 2, starting with verse 1. On the day there was a wedding in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. I like this because I like how in the Bible um, there's just real stories. Because how many know ministry just happens in life? Listen, if you understand this, you're not here just to learn more. You're here to learn more and then do more. You're to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. So why? Because life happens. You know what? You're going to get on the freeway and you're going to and you're going to, you know, deal with with the shenanigans that happens on the freeway. And then you're going to go to, um, you know, Home Depot and they're going to tell you when you ask them, hey, do you know where the screw is? They're going to say, oh, it's on aisle 12. And you're going to think. Is this guy joking? Have you been to aisle 12? Do you have any screws are on aisle 12? Could he not walk me over here and show me at least what, where about it is? You know what I mean? I've been in aisle 12 for a long time looking for a screw. You know what? And, and I'm just saying life happens, does it not? And so um, here life is happening. And we're going to see something happens that isn't, something happened that isn't good. And Jesus is there to fix it. And and when uh, verse verse three and when and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Um, You might be in a situation that has nothing to do. You think it has nothing to do with you. He goes to a wedding. He's invited to the wedding. He's just a guest. And they run out of wine, and his mom turns to him and says, hey, they have no wine. And I'm thinking, Jesus is like, 
Well, what am I supposed to do? You know what I mean? Go to 7-Eleven and buy, I, I, you know, I can't. I don't, this ain't, this ain't my deal. But how many know when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, things that aren't your deal become your deal? Yeah. You know, and, and, and listen, and when you start moving in the power of the Spirit, listen to me, when you start moving in the power of the Spirit, people will recognize that and people will start to look for you for answers. You know, it's interesting because many of your families are, 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 and I just know this because this many people, this happens. You know what? Um, people in your family, they, they think you're crazy. <laughs> Come on. They think you're nuts. And that's, and that's, they thought you were nuts before they found out you were, you became a tither. When you became a tither, when you started, then they really thought you lost it. Amen. We're going to talk soon about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and the, one of the gifts of the, of the Holy Spirit is speaking with other tongues. And I'm going to teach you how biblical it is. I'm going to teach you right out of the word how it's God's will that everyone have a heavenly language that they can speak in and that they can help them. And the Bible says it'll build you up. And I'll show you. You say, no, no, pastor. Only, only some, you know what, are supposed to receive the gift of, of tongues. No, no. I'll show you how that's completely wrong. Only some in a service, in a service, have the manifestations of speaking in tongues. Why? So there would be order in the service. And so the people who are coming can receive uh, what God has for them. I'll show you that in the word of God. And I'll show you more than one place where God makes it clear. Jesus said it himself that anyone who believes that these gifts will follow them. And one of the gifts he says is they will speak with other tongues. Not some, not some can and some can't. But anyone who believes can receive the gift of tongues. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you that in the word of God. But for many of you who have already received that gift, I'm telling you what, they think you are looney tunes. Okay. But they don't, they don't, you know, let's not have condemnation on our, on our people that are in our family. Let's be quick to remember uh, where we were four months ago, where we were six months ago, where we were two years ago. Let's, let's be quick to be um, empathetic, not hostile towards people who, who are um, not in the family of God yet. And let's believe that they'll come into the family of God. Let's believe that, you know what, through our example, that they'll see Jesus in our lives. Can somebody say amen to this? Amen. So understand, Jesus is here, and people are looking at him. Watch this. What a great testimony that, um, that Jesus' mother would look to him. I've told you this. Some of the hardest, probably the hardest place to exercise your Christianity is at home. Why? Because at home, uh, you know, your kids can be irritating. You know what? Right? Your spouse can tick you off. I'm, I'm not saying that Tamara ticks me off. I'm saying she could. I know I take her off sometimes. And, uh, but Jesus' mother is looking at him and says, nope, 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 I'll tell you what, this is the one to go to. My point is, um, try to do your best to be a good example to those who are around you, even if they criticize you. Here's why. Because... When they're hurting, don't you want them to come to you? you know? and, and so to try to be as consistent as you can so they come to you. So, so Jesus' mother is coming to him. Look at verse 4. Jesus said to her, woman, 
What does this concern? What what does your concern have to do with me? Now, look, 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 he's not just being rude here. Look at what he says. My hour has not come, has not yet come. It's going to come, but it's not yet. Mom, you want to do what's right, but you know what? Remember that song? Oh, oh man, this is going to date me. Uh, uh, it was the right time. No, it was the right place, but it must have been the wrong time. Well, Christ, I wish I knew more words. I'd sing it to you, okay? Thank God I've forgotten a lot of those uh, 70s and 80s songs. Hallelujah. But, uh, but here's what I'm saying. Jesus wanted to, he, he said this. We, we learned this recently. Jesus said, I only do what my Father says to do, and I only say what my Father says to say. And my Father's not saying anything right now. He's, he's not telling me to do that. Well, why would he do that? Here's why. Because his father told him to do that. When did his father tell him to do that? Does anybody know? When the Bible, did you know? No. When, 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 when the father wrote in the Old Testament, you know what, children, obey your parents. Does that make sense? So he's conflicted here. Because he knows it's not the right time. That's why he's not trying to be rude. But he knows this woman. That you're, you're, huh? But what does he do? Oh, he's going to be obedient to, to his mom. Why? Because that's what the word says. Hallelujah. So a uh, great, 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 great coaching, teaching, training lesson right here. The word of God needs to have the final authority in our life. If God said, yeah, but I don't feel like it. Yeah, but the word says. Yeah, but it's not, blah, 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 blah. all the yabba, yabba, you know, yabba, yabba, doobity. You know what? Just do what God asks you to do. And so that's what Jesus is going to do. It's not his time, but he's going to override that because God has told him already. You know what? Children, obey your parents. And so he's going to be obedient. And at this point, he's not a child, but he is going to, the Bible says, honor your father and mother. Well, I need to honor my mom. You know what? And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a grown man, but I still need to honor her. Does that make sense? So he's going to honor her. Now, I crack up because um, look at his mom. He says, he, what does he say? Verse 4, Jesus said to her, woman, what does that concern have to do with me? Uh, my hour has not yet come. Now, look at Jesus' mom. And his mother said to the servants, whatever he says to do, do it. Ah, what, what is she doing? She's just ignoring what he's saying. Is she not? She's like, uh, uh, okay, that's nice. You know what I mean? One time, uh, one time, Tyler, he was he was a little boy, and and uh, we had him in the in the back seat, you know, in his in his uh, booster seat or whatever safety seat, and uh, and and Tamara thought this was a good opportunity to go over with Tyler. Uh, that he needed to be more responsible and picking up his clothes and, and straightening up his room and this kind of stuff. So she is going over kind of a laundry list of things that he needs to work on. And Tamara gets done, and Tyler says, uh, Hey, Mom, I don't know about all that, but I want a fire truck. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but I want a fire truck. That, uh, that's Mary's, Tyler's version. She's like, I don't know all about all that, but just kind of ignoring what he's saying and just says, and just does, you know, he's talking or gets done talking, doesn't even address him, just turns to the servants and says, hey, whatever he says to do, do it. Whatever he says to do, that is a, that is a good verse to underline. That is a good verse for all of us to hear. Whatever God is saying to do, we just need to do it. Do it. Verse 6. Now there was set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the of the Jews, containing 20 to 30 gallons apiece. Wow, 20, 30 gallons. How I many know this is a lot of water? Okay. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. 
How many know this is not uh, per se a typical way to make wine? Do you understand? But again, here we have Jesus just uh, understanding that that God will give us methods sometimes that don't make sense. The seats that you're sitting in, all the seats, we, we, have, we have a lot of chairs, all the chairs. All we had was pews. We didn't have any chairs. And the pews were old. We were talking about, well, we need to refurnish those, those pews. But we said, no, let's not do that. Let's buy chairs. Why? Because chairs, not only they look nice, pews look nice too. But as long as we're going to spend that money, Chairs are cool because you can stack chairs. We stacked all these chairs for our granny's uh, memorial service and put tables here. Boom. You can do all kinds of different things. So we had a, a Tamara's boss. Uh, one of Tamara's bosses was uh, in the furniture business and, uh, and specifically making chairs. And Tamara and I thought, oh, you know, because we, 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 we needed chair. We needed to do something. So we thought, oh, well, this is probably what God is going to use. God didn't use that at all. He opened up this whole different source to us that we never would have even thought of. Matter of fact, uh, you know, you probably heard this story, but I'll tell you the story. I was at a pastor's breakfast. I was, Tamara was sitting next to me. I was sitting next to... Uh, a pastor, and Tamara was sitting next to a pastor. And I started having a conversation with this pastor, and Tamara started having a conversation with this pastor. This pastor, um, you know, I was talking to, but I knew the pastor that she was sitting next to. And I knew, at that point in time, we had probably less than 50 people at our church. But I knew this pastor had probably less than 20 people at his church. Very, very small church. And I was talking to this guy, and Tamara was talking to this other guy. And Tamara says, um, this guy asked her, well, tell me what's happening at, at, at Hope. And she started telling him, well, we're, we're going we're gonna to get new chairs. Where our pews are old and we're going to get. And then she said this. She said, maybe you'd like to give, maybe your church would like to give uh, out of your missions budget, missions fund, you know what? to help us purchase these chairs. Now, you've heard Tamara's version of this story, right? Uh, I heard her say that. She says that she felt me turn like this. Uh, I don't know that that's true. But here's what I do. I remember thinking, I remember thinking this. Oh, my goodness, my wife is crazy. My wife has just absolutely lost it. Because she gonna ask this guy, but then I this is a true story. I remember having this thought. I remember thinking, uh, my wife is not crazy, but my wife is led by the Spirit. I remember thinking that, and I remember thinking, because how, how many know my wife to know she's a very intelligent woman, and I thought, you know, she she's not gonna ask, she is being led of the Spirit right now, and that. She said, well, we're not interested in doing that, but I can give you a number of someone who might be able to help you. Hallelujah. And within a month, we had almost $20,000 for the chairs that you're sitting in. Hallelujah. Amen. Just come right through the mailbox lot. Hallelujah. And... And the church van that we've used for years and years and years, and we're still using, hallelujah. You know what? They purchased that van. Amen. 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 And, and other, other things, other items that, that, that we see. God has a different way sometimes than we expect. And that doesn't mean sometimes he does stuff exactly the way we expect it. But sometimes he doesn't. And we get very, very we're going to get very, very in trouble if we start to only, listen, just give God options to move in all kinds of ways in your life. Do you understand? 
and then be open to what he does. So he, Jesus tells these guys, fill up these pots with water. Verse 7, Jesus said to them, fill the, pot, the, the water pots with water and fill them up to the brim. And I want to, you know, listen, we're running out of wine the second time. Can you say amen to this? Amen. Hallelujah. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. Then the master of the feast had tasted it. When the master of the feast had tasted it, the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from. Here's, check this out. But the servants who had drawn the water knew. They knew what was going on, but notice he didn't know. Somebody say he didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't know a miracle took place. Look what he does. And this is significant, and I'll show you why. He didn't know what, what happened. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests are well drunk, um, they uh, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. He doesn't even know this is going on. But here's what he notices. And the reason I think this is significant is because I don't think that this wine was a little bit better than the wine before. I think it was a lot better. And the reason I think it was a lot better is because he doesn't know the miracle took place. He don't know where this wine came from. All he knows is that this is way better so he stops and says, finds his, the bride or the bridegroom, who, the bridegroom, finds the bridegroom is like, what in the world? Why would you do it like this? What is my point? My point is, uh, it, it's why our spirit is of excellence here at this church. Listen, I'm not saying um, that we couldn't do things better. Because I think we could always do things better. But the point is, we want to do things with the most excellence that we can do. When you, when you come in here, um, let, let, me, let, here let, let me give you a for instance, because I, I want to teach you what good stewards we are. Um, when you do things with excellence, you usually save money. Because if you do it cheaply, it breaks and, and you're, already, you're already out money. Now you have to go back. And so whenever you're trying to do something, try to do it with the most excellence you can. Because in the long run, somebody say in the long run, you're going to save some money. If you do it, try to do it with the most excellence you can. We're not in here. We're not here for the short term. We're in here for the long term. I mean, if Christ comes back. Tomorrow, so be it, and that would be okay with me. But this concrete is good concrete. Do you understand? Amen. It is. What I'm saying to you is, let, let, me, just, let me just give you a for instance. These TVs, we had six TVs that, that were, uh, I'll just, I just want you to know. You should know the excellence that this church has and the great stewardship that this church has. You know, how many know Satan will come to your mind with all kinds of junk, just trying to get you all twisted? Well, I'm, they didn't need that many TVs. Well, shut up. <laughs> okay, but but let me let me just let me just teach you some stuff. So these TVs originally we only had six TVs, and originally they were a lot better quality than the ones we purchased. Well, why would you purchase these? I thought you said you have a spirit of excellence. We do, but we don't have a spirit of stupidity. Do you understand? Oh, we, we stretch a dollar like no other church that I know of. Amen? So when I'm meeting with, um, with, the, with the gentleman who helped us with this, you know what? I, I looked and saw the price of the TVs. I'm like, what? What's up with that? 
I mean, that's an expense. How, how come those are so expensive? And he said, well, that's a special TV that it, it cuts down the glare. It's a high resolution, cuts down the glare. And I said, uh, uh, well, you get me a good, another good TV that cuts down the glare, but we don't need to have that kind of quality. Here's why. Because we're in a shade structure. And so we're not in the direct sun. We're, we're not in the direct sun. And these aren't going to be in the direct sun. Well, we saved a ton of money in getting. We still, you can look these up. It's still high quality resolution TV. But we didn't need to spend that extra. And they, the extra money was a lot. They were really expensive TVs. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, we don't need that. We're not out in the sun like over here where you would need that kind of stuff. No, no, we're in a shade structure. How many, how many can see everything okay? Yeah. Well, why did you, why, why, we don't need, why'd you, why, why'd you buy eight instead of six? We could have saved some money. Here's why, because when the original design was here, even though the front of the stage is here, okay, which means everybody's looking that way, uh, when you come in about two Two months or one month or whenever we're back inside, and back inside is going to be awesome. But when you come out here with your with your uh, with your carne asada, okay, there's not going to be all this over here. There's going to be, and I don't know how Tamara's going to, you know what? She's going to rearrange everything and and uh, let me tell, let me let me brag on Tamara a little bit. Uh, when she arranges rearranges stuff, she rearranges it and then rearranges it. And then rearranges it. And then rearranges it. Why? Because it is going to be right when it's done. Amen? And you have to, and you have to, Drew, you have to move it to see it. You have to see it. Just, just move it and holler it. So we'll rearrange. Okay. But when, when you're sitting here, guess what? Oh, my goodness. And you're at a round table and we're watching something. Maybe, maybe we have a Dodger party. Maybe we watch the Dodgers. Amen? Okay. Or maybe the Dodgers aren't even going to make the playoffs. Maybe we're going to have an angel party. I'm just saying. Okay. And you're sitting here at the table. You're not going to have to go like this. Why? Because we got a TV right there. Okay. And I had planned that. But what I didn't plan is all the tables that are going to be back here facing that way. And I thought, no, no, can we put, two, can we purchase two more? Because I want all these people. We could have 20, 30 people facing this way. See, excellence is our spirit. Okay. And so, and so well, where, where, do, where do we get that spirit? We get that spirit from the spirit of God. Amen. Yeah. See, people, people, you know, we all need to read our Bibles. Amen. Yeah. They're going to. They're going to uh, rip up his clothes. And before they rip up his clothes, what do they say? Don't rip that. That's quality. Well, who's going to get it? Don't rip it up. We'll cast lots for it. That whoever gets it is going to have a nice jacket when they go home today. Where, where did that come from? Excellence. The excellence of spirit. You know what? When um, when when he when he uh, fed the five thousand, I believe that was the best fish and chips those people ever ate. See, I, we just see this in the way God does things, and I learned this from Pastor Bradford. Now, sometimes sometimes budget has to do with it, but do the best job you can with what you have, and sometimes if it takes you. You know, a little bit longer, save a little bit more money, save the money and do the best to get something that's good quality. Hallelujah. That's all free. But that's the spirit of God, guys. That is the spirit of God. And that doesn't mean that, you know what, you can't go to Big Five. I like going to Big Five because I get nice stuff there and they at good prices. I mean, that don't mean you can't buy something at Walmart. You know what I mean? You know, don't get too big for your britches. Amen. But. God has a spirit of excellence. And so this guy tastes this wine. He's like, oh, my goodness. And then, and I, I, you know, I don't drink wine. I don't, I don't drink. I'm just telling you what I, I don't, don't drink any of that stuff. Um, so I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know a lot about that stuff. But I do know this. 
or I've heard this, that, that wine that is aged is a lot of times better quality wine. Something in the aging process makes it taste better, makes it better quality. Well, how long had that been made? Do you understand? See, this was a miracle upon a miracle upon a miracle. Amen. So look what he says. He's like, man, wow, verse 10. And he said to him, every man in the beginning. Okay, but I'm sorry, verse 11. Go to verse 11. This beginning of signs Jesus did at Canaan of Galilee and manifest his glory. What's his glory? His glory is... um, The the signs were part of his glory. You ever hear this? A a king comes with great uh, pomp and sense and and great fanfare and all this stuff. And and you'll see all this and they'll say, wow, that's the king in all his glory. Sometimes the nations will will have these parades and they'll they'll show all their missiles and all their their armament and what they did. They're showing their glory. Okay. Well, Jesus' glory is supernatural. He's doing all these signs and these wonders. Verse 12. After this, he went to Canaan. Uh, he went to Capernaum. He, his mother and brothers and his disciples, and they did not stay there many days. Verse 13. Now, the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found in the temple, he, he went up to Jerusalem. But if you had a map, Jerusalem was south. Well, how did, why did it say he went up? Because the elevation was up. So even though he was going south, it was going up. They were walking uphill. So he's going south, but he's walking up. Um, and he found, verse 14, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and money changers doing business. Well, a lot of things were going on here, but there would be people who would be coming from long distances. And so when they got there, they needed animals to sacrifice. In the temple, they did animal sacrifice. And so, um, and so they would purchase those um, I don't necessarily think that was the problem. I think the problem was uh, they were taking advantage of people. Um, um, what are you going to do? You know, it's 4th of July. You know what? Your kids want sparklers. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? You're going to go to one of the few stands in Pico Rivera and you're going to buy the sparklers, right? And just so you know, we're going to have a, a, a fireworks stand. We don't set the prices, amen? We don't set the prices. But it's just, it's just an example. It's just an example to say um, those companies might be taking advantage of people. I don't know what the profit margins are. Here's what I know, that um, sometimes, oh, here, here's, a, here's a better example. You know, go to Dodger Stadium. You know what, I mean? what are you going to do? Eight bucks for a hot dog? Are you kidding me? What do you get? Why are you spending eight bucks for a hot dog? Here's why. Because you smell those roasted hot dogs and you can't buy them anywhere else. You know what I mean? You could go after the game and, and buy, you know what, so many more at Dorena Snitchell. Okay? But, why, but you don't want, you buying it there. You have no choice. And so they take advantage. I believe that these people were being taken advantage of and God hates. Let me tell you about God. God is very cognizant of people who are downtrodden in in any way. It's interesting because Jesus gets accused of, uh, Christianity gets accused of, uh, of not really caring specifically about women. Are you kidding me? Nobody... And, and, and let me just tell you why we get, we get accused of that. Because of two passages in the New Testament that are taken out of context where, where Paul says 
in this church, I don't want women to speak. And people who don't know the Word of God, haven't studied the Word of God, will take that out of context and throw it in Christians' face and say, you know what, that's why I hate religion. That's what I hate Christianity. You know what, Jesus, listen, just learn a good history lesson. If you're going to look at the, the freedom that women have in countries that are Christian, that's where they got it first, in Christian countries. Why? Because of Christ. Because the Bible says in the New Testament, the Bible says that there's neither slave nor free, Greek nor Jew, male nor female. Amen. Amen. You can say amen to this. And, and Christ is the one that is more responsible of delivering any downtrodden people. Any God doesn't care what the color of your skin is. He doesn't care that you went to Pioneer High School. He can still use you. I went to Pioneer High School, by the way. He can still use you. He doesn't care. If you're not the perfect reader or have trouble in math or, or, or your hair's not right or all these different things that the society says, oh, that's what's important. That's what's important. No, no, no. God has and always has cared about people that have been oppressed. And he always raises people like that up. He's always defended them. And so in this case, he sees people who are being taken advantage of. Well, you know, Christ is just meek and mild, never raised his voice, never. You know what? I'll read your Bible. I'm telling you what. Jesus Christ, you know, I'm telling you what, he don't mess around. No, really. We, we sometimes have a wrong understanding of Christ. And I'm not saying he's in all those things. But I'm saying when it's time for him to take care of business, he's going to take care of business. He has no problem, you know, getting in somebody's face and saying, I'm telling you what, you're out of line. One time, uh, one time I had a lady and uh, we were in the, we're in the North Sanctuary. This is way back in the day. And we're in the North Sanctuary. And you go in there and you can come out that side door. See that side door? And I had come out that side door. And she beelined it to the back because she knew I usually came out that side door to catch me right away. And she said, Pastor, I just want to tell you, I'm so mad at you. I'm so mad at you. I just smile, you know. Okay. And she said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go home. I'm not going to say nothing to you. I'm going to come back next week. Why was she mad? Because I talked about finances. I, I tell you what, I've seen people get so, you know what, religious people, selfish people. That, you know, you talk about money and you talk about, hey, you know what, you, a bunch of, all your money is God's and you ought to be part of building the kingdom. I'll tell you what, people get all riled up. You know what? They get on the internet, listen to a bunch of bozos who don't know what they're talking about. Amen to this. And I taught it right out of the word of God, right out of the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept. She came back the next week and said, Pastor, I'm sorry for being mad at you. Well, what, 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 what was I going to do? I'm just going to tell, I'm just going to tell people the truth. And that's what Jesus is going to do. He's just going to tell people the truth. So look what he does. Where am I? Um, oh, 15. And he made a whip of cords. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. He, who, ba, ba, who made a whip? Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus made a whip. I say, I'm telling you what. I'm telling you what, this is Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He made a whoop. He made a whoop. He's going to whoop. Right? He drove them out of the temple 
and the sheep and the oxen and perch and and uh, and poured out the changers money and overturned the tables. He chased them out and then he overturned the the, the took the money, dumped it down, took the tables, overturned him. Oh, what's he doing? Guys, I'm, I'm not going to, you're not, you're, you're not going to do this to these people. It ain't going to happen. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. And he said to those who sold those doves, uh, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Okay. Now, now let me, let me, hmm. We don't got time. I got to stop. I, I got time to finish this up. Okay. But we'll, well, here's the cool thing about Wednesday. Wednesday, we're just taking off where we left off before. Okay. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, so I'll say this. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with this. Understand this. Um, that doesn't say, I've had people, religious people, somebody say religious people. Religious. You know what? And they, and they, and they use this as a, as a context. Be careful that you don't become religious. What do I mean by that? Um, they got upset because Jesus' disciples are, are, um, are eating grain on the Sabbath. And they get all upset. And Jesus is like, what? What is your problem? Not because they ate grain, but because they... They took the grain. That was considered work. So they, they freaked out. Listen, you can start. Jesus says, you make the, out, the outside is dirty, but the, the outside is clean, but the inside is dirty. Okay. Here's what I've had people say before, that you can't sell. Like we sell T-shirts, whole community T-shirts. We'll sell t shirt uh, We're going to sell uh, Abba Fres Frescas Sunday. Come Sunday and, and make sure you have your tithes and offerings, but have five bucks extra, okay? Look at your neighbor say, have five bucks extra. Okay? Because we have these tumblers. They're Hope Community tumblers. And, um, and, uh, and we're going to be selling those for, with the Ava Fresca for five bucks. So, you know, oh, Pastor, didn't you read? Didn't you? You just read. You shouldn't. You know what? Hey, listen, don't be, don't be overchanging our Ava Frescas, you know? Don't go, oh. You don't think you're godly. You're not godly. You're out of order, okay? So um, why? Because, because that's not what God's talking about. God is talking about. He's doing that because these men are taking advantage of people. That's what they're doing. They're taking advantage of people, and that's what he hates. I'll, I'll leave you with one story. We, uh, we, were, we were doing some um, work in the North Sanctuary this way back in the day, and we had a friend, and he came out to help us. I had a friend that was religious. Everybody say he was religious. Okay. And we bought some, um, some Egg McMuffins. And uh, you know what? We were hungry and, and working already all morning. It started to get late. I ran, ran out and got some Egg McMuffins. And so we brought the Egg McMuffins. And it wasn't like, like nowadays where we have all kinds of places to sit and relax. And we didn't have anything like that. So we just, and we were working. So we just were on the stage in the, in the North Sanctuary, on the stage. We just sat down on the stage and started eating. And we started to, we didn't even start eating. We started to unwrap, you know what, the, and we're like, hey, you know, I'll, I'll call the guy. I don't want to call him anything, but hey, bro, I'll call him bro. Hey, bro, come on in. You know, let's you know, look, look what Pastor Drew got us. Oh, you know, and he, he was like, oh, no, no, no. We shouldn't eat those in the sanctuary. I'm like, dude, we're going to pray over this food. It's going to be blessed. Amen. <laughs> you know, I could eat it under the tree. I could eat it in the grass. I could eat it in the sanctuary. I could eat it. You know what I mean? See, but see, religious people, they get all into this detail stuff and they don't, and they, and they, and they miss the huge things. They miss the huge things. He told the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he said, you, you're tithers, which is a good thing. You even tithe on your mint. Even on, your, even on your spices, you tithe on. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. He doesn't say don't tithe. He says, but big things you don't even pay attention to. Let's pay attention to the big things. Amen? Amen. Let's not, you know what, get crazy because we're selling uh, Abba Fresca.
And think, and, and let me just tell you what we're doing, what we're going to do. I'm telling you what, you're going to come out of service and you're not going to, you're, you're, trust me, you ain't going to want to go to Taco Bell or, or Tommy's. You ain't, gonna, you ain't even want to go to, to, to Steak and Stein. You know, you ain't going to want to go to any of those places. Why? Because we're going to have barbecue ribs and barbecue chicken and we're going to have carne asada burritos we're going to have tamara's famous chicken burritos we're going to have we're going to have you know what all kind of good food you're going to be like oh i gotta go oh no i don't <laughs> i'll tell you it's good what's going to happen and let me just cast vision and we're going to come in this place and we're going to eat together and we're going to we're going to enjoy each other's fellowship, and we're going to minister to each other. It's going to be great. Hallelujah. Well, did you get something out of this today? Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Uh, we'll jump right into this next week. And what we're doing, we're just going to go on Wednesday, kind of new format. We're just going line upon line, precept up on precept. Hey, didn't the worship team do great to, to, tonight? Man, I just outstanding. Amen. All right. All right. Let me pray over you before we dismiss. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for your goodness. May we uh, get just good rest tonight. May we rest in the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, help us in, in all kinds of ways that we need help in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Love you guys. Hey, uh, uh, make sure you're watching tomorrow at 10 o'clock. We're trying to just get people on where they would start to be very dependent and, and just live their life that we're reading a chapter in the New Testament. And we don't want to read it alone. We want to read it together. So I'm going to read it at 10 with people. But if you don't get home till 6 or 7 or 8, that's okay. But when you come home, it's just 20, 25 minutes, just short. But it'll be a blessing to you. And right now we're in Matthew, which has just been fabulous. You know, fabulous, fabulous. Tomorrow we're going to be in Matthew, Matthew chapter 25, which is just a, just off the hook chapter. Amen. I say that about every chapter because every chapter is good, but, but tomorrow's going to be done. All right. Love you guys. You are dismissed.